evening, everyone, and welcome to Political Forum. This is your chance to speak with elected officials within the city of Chicago. My name is Mike Jacobs, and I'm a board member here at KTV. And joining us tonight, State Senator Omar Aquino from the 2nd District. Mike, thanks for having me on. Great having you on. All right. So, folks, so this is your time. So if you have a question, comment, or concern for the State Senator, the number's at the bottom of the screen. The number is 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. And please tell your friends and family they can also watch us online right now at cantv.org backslash hotline. All right, uh, Senator Aquino, so for folks who may not know much about you, why don't you, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, so I am the senator in the second district, which is uh, in the uh, city, mostly in the city of Chicago, but I am a product of the second district. Um, I'm a product of Chicago Public Schools. Uh, my parents were hardworking middle class uh, people. They, my mother was a teacher's assistant for many years at, uh, with the Chicago Public Schools uh, dis uh, District. And my father uh, worked for the city as well. Uh, started his career actually as a truck driver, uh, as a teamster. So come from a union family. Uh, those issues are important to me. And so I was just a, sort of a young guy that wanted to make a difference in this community, got involved and uh, I sort of rose up and uh, 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 made my way to the state senate. I decided to run for, uh, and seek uh, 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 this position, and uh, I was able to have the support of the people in the second district. And now I'm proud to to, to be their representative down in Springfield. Great. We're going to show uh, right now how folks can uh, get a hold of you. So there's your uh, district office, which has an address in Armitage at 4150 West Armitage. Uh, phone number 773-292-0202, and they can email you at info at senatorakino.com and then you also have a very nice website which we'll also uh, show later on in the show where people can learn more about you actually you can also sign up uh, for your newsletter and, and the like so um one of the things that is interesting about you is that you are now you're the youngest ever latino to serve as a state senator that's correct um so there's one of uh, there's four latinos right now in the 59 uh, members of, in the state senate. I'm, I'm one of four, but I'm the youngest ever uh, Latino to serve uh, in the state senate, and I'm one of the youngest in the history to serve in the state senate. I think there's only been a few, like probably two or three other gentlemen that were just a little younger than I. I'm 29 years old and uh, uh, happy to be uh, to be working as a state senator right now. Uh, and actually, you're uh, considered a millennial. So I, I am, yeah. So taking that approach, what do, so being a millennial, what what kind of a, uh, what does that give you as you're going down uh, into Springfield? So you know, I um, I'm actually the only millennial in the state senate as well. I'm the youngest, uh, as we said. Uh, but what it does is that there's a lot of other young electeds that are are down in Springfield. Uh, Will Gazzardi being one of them. I'm looking forward to working with them and and actually crossing, um, you know, by camera and bipartisan path so that we can try to push uh, legislation that will benefit this state. I think uh, right now, politically, a lot of young people uh, don't necessarily get involved. Uh, they don't necessarily see government as an answer. Uh, there's a lot of frustration out there. But I think that if they see people like myself, they see Will Gazzardi, say Alderman Carlos Rosa, uh, young people that are getting involved at, at all levels in, in city, state, uh, government I think that it encourages other young people to say hey I, I have a chance to, to represent my community um, I do have a voice and uh, you know I could probably you know start getting more, a little bit more active in my community and what do you say to people on the flip side who are saying hey you're too young you're not experienced we want an experienced person down in Springfield <laughs> yeah so I've been told that a lot I've been told uh, you know that you're too young you have to wait your turn or so forth uh, you know, I, I didn't let that and I don't let that deter me, you know, um, I don't go down to Springfield saying that I know everything. But what I do is do know is that I, I, I work hard and I'm willing to listen to, to others and being pragmatic. And so, um, you know, I'm looking to working collaboratively. I think that's the way that we can move our state forward is working together. And I'm looking forward to doing that. I just want to show uh, people also the, the boundaries of the second district. You can Put this up, and so oh, let me straighten that out. So, so talk about your district, you know, and, and, and what it entails. And you can actually want to use my pen, you can to show off areas. Absolutely. So it pretty good. It pretty much is the um, the northwest side of the city of Chicago. So we go in this portion right here is Ogden, and uh, where Ogden uh, and Grand meets basically. We're walking in, in Grand, uh, and so we basically follow Grand Avenue, which is down here on the southern end, all the way to. 
this portion over here, which is actually in Emwood Park. That's a 74th court, so we just go a little bit west of Harlem. Uh, on the north side, it's a little bit more different. We have uh, Irving Park as our furthest northern portion. Uh, so we have parts of Dunning here, uh, Shorts Village, Montclair, a little bit of Galewood, Austin Community, and mostly Hermosa, Humble Park. Um, East Village, uh, Wicker Park, Ukrainian Village, and West Town. And so we, uh, we cover about 13 different wards, a portion at least of them, uh, and a portion, like I said, of Emwood Park and Leiden Township. And so, but mostly it's uh, the first ward, uh, most of the, almost all of the 26th ward, a good portion of the 36th ward, and then there's about, you know, about 10 other wards that, that we cover as well. So you've been, you've been in office for about since July 1st, so about two months. One, two months. What are you learning about the district and what are your constituents, what are the families, what are they telling you about, about what they're concerned about, what they're happy about? Yeah, well, um, there's, uh, there's a lot to be concerned about in our state. You know, our budget is having an impact throughout. Um, you know, I, 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 I say that, you know, in the second district, it's a working class district for the most part. You know, I would say uh, mo most, if not all people in that district when knocking the, uh, door to door, uh, I saw they had a personal story of how the cuts uh, on the state level impacted them, either uh, themselves, someone they knew, or a neighbor of theirs. So, you know, there is hope, though, that that there's there's there, things can't get any worse, I'm hoping. Um, but, you know, right now, uh, social services are, are seeing uh, a great, uh, tremendous cuts. I would say it's, uh, there was a term that was used on, on, a, on a conference call I was on once that they said it's social service, uh, human service, Armageddon. And it's, it's, it's true. It's unfortunately what's happening right now is that our state, and because of our governor, is deciding to cut uh, programs to those that need the uh, you know, services the most. And, um, and and that's that's unfortunate. And so that's why you know why I'm I'm passionate to go down to Springfield to put a change to that, but to put a stop to that and make sure that we are putting monies and, and, and resources uh, adequately to the places and, and, and people that need, that need them. Uh, people hear all, all the time the term uh, around our turnaround um, agenda. The uh, what is it exactly? What does that mean? What, and you know, for people who may not know. Sure. <clears throat> so Governor Rauner, when he came into office, decided that he had these sort of reforms that he proposed. That um, he had this agenda that he had. Really, it's more of a political agenda rather than than uh, any economic plan or anything like that. Um, he decided that uh, you know um, uh, taking away uh, the um, uh, uh, redistricting from from uh, from legislators was part of it um, uh, really trying to create this state into a, a, um, a right to work state was another portion of it so really just uh, taking collective bargaining weights, uh, rights away from from working families um, and a lot of other issues that he contends are, are sort of these reforms, but the problem is that he has been holding the, host, the state hostage ever since, saying that if these reforms are not, and fully, are not pushed through legislatively, that he would not sort of sign budgets. And so for his first year, uh, his first uh, year, um, he had, there was no budget that the state was able to pass. Right now, this year, we have a, a temporary budget, um, which, I still get phone calls in, in the district office saying, of, of different programs of saying, look, we've um, heard that FY16 is getting dollars. FY17 has already started. What, where, where, you know, where are the money, uh, where some, when, in, when is the money coming and how is the process of obtaining those dollars for programs that, you know, exist? Uh, one of them being the Teen Reach program, which actually school started on Tuesday. And mm -hmm. so this is a program that, you know, and, and others like it that are not being funded and, and should be. And there's a lot of things, you know, you talk, you brought up the schools. There's a lot of things we can talk about tonight. I know that some, uh, some things that you want to work on, you know, right now on, on, until once session starts, and a lot of it has to do with schools. Uh, one thing you want to talk about or that, that you're looking at doing is uh, transparency when it comes to uh, charter schools. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the bills that I'd like to propose in in January, and we're we're having legislation that's going to be uh, being it's being written up actually as we speak, um, is a transparency bill that would follow sort of the dollars that we give to specifically charter schools, and it says that they would have to like all, all other public schools uh, make their dollars or pu the public dollars that we give them public. Um, so either uh, um, putting it on, on online or finding a way to, to have sort of annual report that ha shows how the money was, was, was used 
or that they would follow under the Freedom of Information Act and be foiable. That meaning that if, if someone of interest wanted to find out how they're utilizing those dollars, that they would have to oblige and, 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 and f give them that information. Right now, because uh, many charter schools are actually private entities, what they say when, when someone reaches out to find out how mm -hmm. public dollars are used, they say, well, although you're asking about public dollars, we're a private entity, so we are not foiable. We don't have to uh, disclose that information. So I see this as a way that we follow the dollars. Uh, right now, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, obviously um, they, people do not want to pay more taxes. Uh, they want to know where their taxes are going. And so that's really what it's about. It's saying, look, we, we ask uh, a lot from the people of, the, from the people of the, uh, Illinois uh, in terms of taxation uh, and revenue. Um, we need to be able to provide them information of how we are actually utilizing those dollars and if we're utilizing them correctly. Uh, again, folks, uh, you're watching Political Forum tonight. Uh, we have about 20, uh, what is it, about 15, 20 minutes left in the show. So please, if you want to have a question, if you have a question, comment, or concern for State Senator Omar Aquino, the number's at the bottom of the screen, 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. So keeping on the, the, the school theme, mm -hmm. also uh, some, some things that people have heard about in the past, like an elected school board. That's another thing that you want to mm -hmm. look at when you, when you get into office and Absolutely. So the elective school board, at least from K through 12, there's two bills. Uh, many people don't actually know this. There's a, a bill from K through 12 that was passed from the House already. Uh, and there's another bill for um, the city colleges. I'm a, I'm a proponent for both. For uh, I believe that there should be an elective school board both for city colleges and through K through 12. The more popular one is the K through 12 elective school board. And uh, the, the reason is, is because our school board in uh, the city of Chicago, the only school board in the state that doesn't have an elected school board. It's an, it, they're appointed uh, by the mayor. Uh, back at the General Assembly, I believe it was in, in 1995, gave that power to, uh, to the mayor. And ever since, we've had, we have not had an elected school board. So um, right now, it's, it's, in the, it's in the Senate. I'm looking um, um, uh, forward to working with my, my, my colleague, uh, Senator Kwame Raul, who I know is very interested in pushing this, uh, this legislation forward and making sure we, we pass it from the Senate. And we're hoping that, uh, that Governor Rauner would, would, would sign this piece of legislation. Uh, if not, I believe we're prepared to uh, try to have enough support to override a, a veto if he decides mm -hmm. to go that route. Uh, and then also school funding formula. Yeah, uh, the school funding formula would basically change the way we fund education in the state of Illinois. And so it's a, a great piece of legislation that was uh, that has been brought up by uh, Senator Andy Menard. It has already passed the Senate. It has to go through the House. And it's another piece of legislation that um, I believe we're going to have to try to find enough votes to override a potential uh, uh, veto from our gov excuse me, from our governor. So um, I, I want to make sure that all our public schools are getting the adequate and uh, necessary resources and revenue that they, they need to provide a great education throughout the state of Illinois. Yeah, now within the, the city of Chicago, uh, word swirling around is strike within CPS. Um, so what are families telling you? Uh, you know, are, are they bringing their concerns to you? Certainly, there, there is concern that there would be a strike. We're hoping on, I think both sides really are, are trying to avoid that. I've had con communication with the Chicago Teachers Union. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things, at least in our district, which, which we're going to be uh, doing pretty soon, is we're, I'm trying to convene a lot of different stakeholders and community organizations together that in case there were to be a strike, that we have some community organization that says that they would allow for students to come to their organizations for the day if, if some parents weren't able to provide them mm -hmm. child care. We want to make sure that the students are always, um, um, you know, uh, have their their safety in mind and, and their needs uh, uh, met, but you know it's one of those things that I'm with the Chicago Teachers Union. They have um, you know year after year have given up either with the cost of living adjustments or so forth a lot of uh, from from on their end, and we need to be able to pay uh, professional educators the the adequate and right amount that they should be getting, and so that's a that's a. Uh, something that they earn. It's not something that we just sort of give them a paycheck and they show up. But no, they earn this this uh, uh, the, the, their pay, and they should they should be getting. Um, you know, I think that the city should be giving the the teachers union what um, um, what our educators need. Uh, also, recently in in, uh, in your district, there was a, a rally press conference concerning a charter school coming into the Belmont Craigan neighborhood. Uh, what, can you explain that? 
Absolutely. So what the issue here was that there was four different uh, charter schools that had been underperforming and they lost their, their charter or their contract with the Chicago Public School uh, District. The board of uh, the board uh, the board of uh, 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 Chicago Public School Board actually, excuse me, um, had actually voted to close these four locations. Um, however, there's a charter commission that is from the state that is not the Illinois State Board of Education. It's a separate sort of entity of uh, uh, people that are um, appointed by our governor that decided to over uh, overrule our local school board and decide that three of the four would be able to continue and, and keep their charter, keep their contract uh, for this upcoming year. The issue was that there's a, 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 a nearby charter school that was not in the district, uh, was not in the community, in the Belmont Creighton community, I believe they're uh, closer to uh, the Austin community, uh, that ended up uh, moving to, to Belmont Creighton, uh, to a location there. The issue was that there was not, as, as many people would probably not be surprised when dealing with education in the city of Chicago, there was not public input, which was what was really the frustrating uh, part of this. Um, and the other thing was that you had this um, um, uh, uh, charter commission that, again, it's appointed p people from the, uh, that the governor gets to appoint that were making decisions uh, that were overruling what our, our local school district was had already decided. So, you know, already when we talk about cuts from a, you know, from the state level, mm -hmm. and especially when we're talking about education, you know, when you open these new charter schools, what happens is that, you know, their enrollment to local public schools around that area is going to go down. And so when we fund our education per pupil, mm -hmm. well, with there's less students going to these, um, these, uh, you know, community uh, schools, um, neighborhood schools rather, uh, they're going to be seeing uh, more cuts than they're already anticipating. So do you think like a moratorium on, on, on charter schools? or I, I, be, I, I believe that there should be a moratorium. Um, I believe, especially in the city of, of Chicago, um, I, I would be uh, up for a moratorium statewide, but especially in the city of Chicago, when a few years ago we had, um, you know, our elected officials, our, our, our mayor and our school board that was saying, Look, we can't afford the schools. We have so much that we close 50 schools. But all of a sudden, a few years later, we do have money only if those schools, usually if they're a, a charter school. So I just, I don't see how that makes sense. I don't, I know for a fact that we're not generating really any more new revenue. Uh, we're trying to do that, but um, I just, it doesn't make sense to me that we're just a few years ago, we're closing 50 schools and all of a sudden, if, if, they're, a, if they're a charter entity, a private entity, we can give them a charter to open up a new facility. All right, folks, so again, you're watching Political Forum tonight uh, with State Senator Marquino. I'm just gonna once again show um, the state senator hit all the contact information. If you need to get a hold of him, there it is right there. He's located on 4150 West Armitage Avenue. The phone number is 773-292-0202. Email info at senatorquino.com and also you got a website at senatorquino.com. Now talk about the process since you just came in, uh, you know, two months ago, the process of actually, you know, getting things handled to get everything set to make sure that you have an office, make sure that you have a phone number because it's probably a little harder than what people might think. Yeah, you know, I was I was lucky to have someone. Uh, my my predecessor, uh, Senator Delgado, was a uh, he's been a mentor of mine. He's been a, a, a great uh, champion of public education, public health, and a great uh, leader in our community. Um, actually, I just sort of took over his uh, his district office. Uh, he was kind enough to, to to let me in, and uh, so we try to keep as much of uh, consistency. So a lot of the information you see here or you saw on the screen was uh, uh, my predecessor's uh, contact information. However, we are um, we are making some changes. We'll, we will be moving our, our uh, excuse me, our district office uh, relatively soon within the next month. We are on Armitage and Keeler right now. We are just moving a, a few blocks west to Armitage and Costner on the southeast corner. Um, it's a it's a, a new location for for uh, you know a new leadership and a new office to try to bring vibrancy. But we wanted to make sure that we stayed in uh, the great uh, Hermosa community. Uh, it's right dead center in of the district of the second district, and so we are uh, looking forward to having a an open house. I believe it's uh, a Monday, October third at six p.m. And so we will be getting that information out. Um, we are still waiting on the build out though for our new location. Uh, they're finishing up soon. Uh, that's good. That's <laughs> yeah. good. So let's uh, uh, switch gears here now. Now that we're, we're past Labor Day, mm -hmm. so now the focus is really on the election in November. 
So there's a couple things that, that just recently came out. One was, uh, I believe it was in the Chicago Tribune, talking about uh, the campaign monies for the um, Republican Party throughout the state, mm -hmm. and that I believe Governor Rauner is uh, contributing a significant amount. Yeah, when you, if, if you want to talk about, a lot of people are frustrated with the amount of money that's in politics. And if you want to take a look at where there's an example of too much money by one entity or one person that controls, you know, um, really trying to control the General Assembly is with our governor. Our governor, uh, I think that that article said that he had uh, con had made con contributions to the um, um, Republican uh, people that are running in, in November. About 90 percent of all contributions from the Republican side came from Governor Rauner. 90% of all contributions have come from our governor. And that, that's just crazy. That's, a, you know, that's basically saying that we have a governor that is interested in wanting to buy seats. Essentially, you know, he's trying to, as you said earlier, try to push this sort of uh, turnaround agenda. He doesn't have the votes in either the House nor in the Senate. So I guess his new tactic is uh, trying to push this politically by getting people that would possibly be more um, 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 open to really uh, having detrimental uh, legislation uh, like, you know, right to work in our state and and, and, and uh, really changing the landscape of Illinois. Uh, I don't think people in Illinois want that. I know for a fact that they do not. That's why, actually, I beat someone who had uh, support from our, our, our governor and his allies. Um, he was he actually got involved in a few uh, primary races. My, my opponent um, outspent us, I think, three to one. Mm -hmm. But what we did was we outworked them, and that's what we're going to continue to do throughout the state of Illinois is we, um, you know, uh, I'm going to go help out uh, um, some of my, my colleagues throughout the state that are targets to make sure we're knocking on doors, uh, telling people what, what we as Democrats are trying to do to protect the middle class and, uh, and to, to, to protect them from the governor's disastrous cuts. And we just we know that if uh, more people come out to vote, that that we'll be seeing uh, uh, victories uh, come November. Yeah. So, what do you tell these uh, people as you're going door to door and, and, and meeting them, you know, in, in different areas, of different events? Because really, the the temperature in the state for for everyone is there. There seems there's frustration because all oh, there's a lot of cuts and because they just because they don't have a budget and it seems that both sides, you know, of the aisle aren't working together. So, sure. what, what do you say to to them? You know, I, I tell them that I, I, I understand and I feel their frustration. I'm as frustrated uh, with, you know, some of the the, the, uh, uh, the lack of action that's being taken in, in, in Springfield, uh, so much so that for me it caused me to, uh, inspired me to run. I wanted to see change. And so I was that, you know, I wanted to be that change that, that I wanted to see. So I decided uh, to try to make a, a difference in my community, and I got out there and, and and uh, you know, I met with my neighbors. I told them what my ideas were, and 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 that's why right now I'm proud to you know be sitting here as a, the state senator of the second district uh, because I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work down there. And so I think you know, as much as there has been frustration, people are hopeful that you know that things can get better. You know, this is a great state. We have one of the best cities in the world. Uh, you know, Chicago that you know that you know we live in, and so. Um, there's going to be a better day for Illinois. We just have to make sure that we're working together to get there. Uh, one of the things you mentioned that uh, you might want to work on legislation is the automatic voter registration. Uh, can you talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, so automatic voter registration uh, was a piece of legislation that my colleague, Andy Menard, also had, uh, had introduced. Actually, it passed both the Senate and the House, and unfortunately, our governor decided to, uh, to veto it. Um, the, this was a bill that any time a, a, a resident um, of, the, of Illinois, a citizen of Illinois, would, would go and, and renew their license or get a new li uh, uh, driver's license or an ID, if they were not already uh, registered to, to vote, they would automatically get registered. So anyone that was eligible, be it if they're 18 or over, would, would get uh, registered automatically. However, there was a component of an opt-out. If someone really felt that they did not want to be a part of the democratic process and did not want to get registered, they can opt out of getting registered. Um, so this would open up, actually right now, the number I believe was over two million people would have been able to vote, more people in Illinois would have been able to vote come November. Um, unfortunately, our governor decided to veto that bill. He said that his, ex his excuse uh, was that uh, it would, it would um, open up for, for voter fraud. Um, historically, 
there hasn't been much data to show that there's been a lot of voter fraud um, throughout you know our country. Um, I think the fraud really is a lame excuse that our governor had to, to veto a great piece of legislation that would have opened up and given voice to over two million people in our state. Uh, switching gears uh, to talk about this, but just past you know the Labor Day weekend, uh, crime in the city, uh, there's the, the violence in the city. Now they're saying the statistics say that where we stand right now, there's there's more uh, homicides than all of 2015. So. Um, what are you hearing in your district? Uh, you know, what, what are people yeah. telling you? It's a great concern. You know, I, I have a background in criminal justice. One of my degrees was from, from Loyola was, with, was in criminal justice. I'll say this, um, you know, when you close mental health facilities when, from the state, when you take and, and cut programs that are for, you know, for, for, for young kids to either get employment or, or stay in school and have programs like that, um, when you cut programs that, are, that, that help, are supposed to help people with, uh, with uh, mental health issues and, and, and drug-related, uh, you know, uh, issues as well, you see the results that we see. And what I what I mean to say is that when you disinvest from our communities, unfortunately, there are there are uh, results that we do not like. And there has been a disinvestment from our communities here in in Chicago, and there's been disinvestment from our communities on on the state level. And so we need to rectify that, you know. Uh, and so there's not one solution, you know. Obviously, we need to to come together and make some some sensible um, um, legislation on 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 abilities to, to obtain a, a firearm, uh, but there's also, we need to come together and make sure that we are providing people great edu public education, that we are providing opportunities for people to, to get a great paying job. Um, you know, instead of working and, and having a race to the bottom with low wage jobs, we need to make sure that we have great um, great uh, uh, um, employment opportunities throughout our entire state. And I think if we, if we, if we truly did take an effort into doing a lot of those things, you would see a drastic change in, in, in our crime rates and in our homicide rates. As we have about two minutes left in the show, so let's uh, talk about the district and what, what plans do you think that you have, you know, in, in, in terms of, actually you can talk about also, you know, some, some great things that are going on right now in the district with, that, that some people may not know about. Sure. So, um, you know, one of the things is, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to go out and, and visit uh, different organizations, schools, take tours. If if you are uh, uh, anyone that's in the district and in the second district, either um, an educator, uh, business owner, uh, you, uh, an organization or anyone at all that you want to meet with me or talk about an issue, please do contact us. I am trying to meet with as many people and, and, and stakeholders in our in our district as possible because it, it, it helps to um, to build towards towards next year and creating legislation with having uh, different stakeholders at the table, and that's what I want to make sure I'm, I'm doing. So, um, just recently, like I said, on Tuesday uh, was the first day of school for many kids. I was actually with, uh, invited to Northwest Middle School, rang the first bell, and it was <laughs> great to see all those young kids going to school, excited about the the new year. And so I'm excited to get down uh, in veto session in November and also uh, serve the next two years starting in January for the people of the 2nd District. Well, Senator Kino, before I let you go, I'm going to show the overhead information so people can figure out how to contact you. There's a phone number, 773-292-0202. And also, we got to show also your website. People can also go to your website, which is senatorakino.com. And on there, they can find a much a lot of information, including uh, you can sign up to get on your your e newsletter. Your e your, your, your e newsletter. It uh, comes uh, what? Uh, how often does it? Do you guys turn that? That'll out? be coming out uh, once a month. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And so I want to thank you for also for watching. I want to say thanks Sylvia, who's also was producing the show behind the scenes. So tune in to Political Forum. It's every Wednesday at seven o'clock right here on KTV 21. Until then, I say good night. Good night.